pay for us. We are going to leave the world of two-dimensional mathematics. Because remember, the title of the unit is area and volume. Everything we've done so far has been flat. We're filming, right? All right, so let's look um, here at our page. This is, what is this? 13, 13. Using vocab appropriate for an eighth grader, explain the process of finding the area bounded by the function f of x equals 2 plus sine of x at the right, the x-axis, and the vertical lines x equals 0 and x equals 6. You want to find all of this area. Have a conversation with somebody near you. What would you do? How would you explain this to them? What's the calculus involved? explain this to your 8th grade sibling. My daughter Caroline comes in and says, what's going on? How do you find the area for the shape? Now, a lot of people have written down on their paper that. Good. Good. That's what you would do. But that's not what I'm asking for here. How would you explain to an eighth grader how you're doing this? Why you're doing this? What are we finding? We're finding area. Area of what? Of the shape. We want the area of this, this shape of this region. But that eighth grader is going to be like, I don't know what that is. It's not a square. It's not a triangle. It's not a trapezoid. It's not a circle. It's not the things that fit in my little eighth grade brain. So what do we do? Just one person. <laughs> what have we done this whole time to find the area? What did Riemann tell us to do? Rectangles, right? Make rectangles. Well, how many rectangles? Just one big rectangle? One big rectangle. I find the area of this rectangle, and I found the area for the whole thing? Of course not. Of course not. One rectangle is not going to do it. What do we do? You make a lot of rectangles. And now that eighth grader might be like, oh, okay, I, I can make rectangles. I'm, I'm doing this. I'll do the whole thing. And I hope that they're starting to feel like that, that's stupid. <laughs> right? It's stupid because when I just look at these rectangles, am I getting the exact area? No. No, of course not. But what you're looking for, you're trying to find this value. And what you do is you approximate it by finding the area of a whole bunch of rectangles. I'll just call it A1 through AN. The first rectangle, the second, the third, the fourth, all the way up to the nth rectangle. How do I find the area of any of these rectangles? It's a, it's a length or a height times the width. How tall? How tall is each one of these going to be? They're all going to be different, but the way that you find the height is the same. You look at the value of the function, right? And so the first rectangle, let me just say this is going to be the value of the function at whatever that first point is. That's the height, and then I multiply by the width, and the width is this like delta x, right? And then you move to the next rectangle and say, oh, this is f of x2 times delta x plus f of x3 times delta x plus f of x sub n times delta x. This is the area for each of these rectangles. Now, if you really want to start to get fancy, you start throwing in the fancy stuff. Sigma notation. Oh, no. Right? And we have n rectangles, so we're going to sum from 1 to n. And the reason that this works is that every rectangle has the same area form. It's the value of the function at that particular point times delta x. Now, you've probably lost your eighth grader, but I hope that the calculus friends in the room are like, yeah, I've kind of been here. We're okay. We're, 
We're good? So this is the exact area. No, that's a it's a closer approximation. It's a close approximation, right? I can see with each of these rectangles I have gaps. I have gaps, like some people have in their teeth, I have gaps. Okay? How do we get to the exact area? How do you go from an approximation to the exact area? You do. You absolutely do. And I'm hearing the mumblings out there. I might have five rectangles here, ten, a hundred, a thousand rectangles. I want to get the exact area. Henry, where does that exact area come from? Uh, when you do the limit. When you take the limit is what happens? Uh, as x approaches infinity. Okay, the a as x approaches infinity? That was as x approaches n. It's the limit as something approaches infinity. Yeah. And it's the number of rectangles. We want to get skinnier, skinnier, skinnier rectangles. And so the true area is this limit as n approaches infinity of this sum of f of x sub i times delta x. And what we've seen is that when you take that limit, what you get is an integral of your function with respect to x. Hey, f of x, the height of the rectangle. The dx is the width of the rectangle. And where do you start? In this case, you started at 0 and you ended at 6. This is the big idea. This is what Riemann told us to do when things were flat. <laughs> I, I'll just pretend I didn't hear that. Everybody I'm watching the camera just heard Karina say, <laughs> Okay, everybody good with the flat piece? We've been here before. So I want to take you out of the flat world, out of the two-dimensional world. Now this is where the oohs and ahs are going to be coming. We're going to leave two-dimensional world. Oohs and ahs are about to start happening. And we are going to move into the third dimension. And specifically in calculus, what we do, Michelle, can I, I want to make sure I get you. We're going to look at taking a flat region and revolving it around an axis of rotation. An axis of rotation is just going to be a line, like my arm. It could be horizontal, it could be vertical, it could be diagonal. And we're going to take this and we're going to rotate it. Ready for the use and the us? Here we go. You've never seen this before. Oh my God. It was scary. It was magic. It's also $1.99 at Paper City like eight years ago. It was a good investment. Okay. So everything that we're going to do for the next couple of days is going to be about taking these flat regions and spinning. Okay. That's how we're going to go into three dimensions. Paul, this is where I need your help. And so for the next little bit, you're just going to like watch and ooh and ah and ask your questions and everything's going to be okay. Uh, I'll tab over to Geometry Sketchpad. <laughs> it's not open. It was open. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best joke I ever made. We know what's going on. Okay, not sure what happened. Sorry, Texas. Okay. This is the best thing you've ever done. It takes courage to make that. It's always myself. You never agree. Like, you're going to get shaped. All right. Back to Paul. Kevin, can you turn the, one of the lights off, please? That must be nice. <laughs> Kevin's just moving real slow this morning. Okay, that's perfect. Paul, are you ready? Everybody else ready? Yeah. Andy, you're ready. Okay, we're moving from two dimensions to three dimensions. We're going to always talk about an axis of rotation, which is a line. We're going to talk about a region of some sort, and then I'm going to tell you how we're going to spin this. So, for example, this same graph of 2 plus sine of x, there's nothing to write, it's more, take it in. We're going to take this region over here, and I'm going to spin it around the x-axis, and my fancy word for that is going to be the axis of rotation, or the axis of revolution. And think just for a second, if you take that region, and you spin the whole thing around the x-axis, what are you going to get? What's it going to look like? 3D. I'll take anything. What, the shaded area? Yeah, if you take this entire shaded area. Like a base. And you spin it around the x-axis. So, um, Sylvia says she sees a base. 
A cylinder. Hold on. I want to take the whole thing. The whole thing. And spin the whole thing. So a base makes sense. What else? You see an avocado. Say maybe. Like a pineapple. Pineapple, okay. Pineapple, anybody else seeing it any other ways? Pineapple. Well, I just know that the base is like Okay. <laughs> Some students have described this as um, a fish. What? I don't see it. Oh, I see it. I see the avocado. Right, like here's the tail. Here's the head, like a really flat-headed fish. The vineyard vines whale. Well, kind of the vineyard vines whale. Well, kind of the vineyard vines whale. Okay. Um, I asked Caroline a couple of years ago what she saw if we were to spin this around the axis of rotation. And what she said was Cinderella's dress. It's not that scary. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody see Cinderella's dress? <laughs> Imagine Cinderella laying down. Have you seen Who Framed Roger the Rabbit? How, who Framed Roger Rabbit? Yes, Jessica Rabbit maybe was shaped this way. Right, I think in Caroline's world, this was like the big poofy part of the dress. And then, like, over here is her waist. And then over here, you know, who knows? Okay. Are, are we okay with the visual? Yes. All right. Paul. Paul's going to help us here. Paul, you're going to, like, un unleash the magic of what's going to happen here. I want you to click on revolve one rectangle. This one little rectangle is going to spin around the axis of rotation. Spin it, Paul. Whoa. Oh. Okay, but that's just one rectangle getting spun around the x-axis. If you spin this around the x-axis, what is that shape? Okay, it's a three-dimensional object. Circles are flat. This is a cylinder. This is a cylinder. Your rectangle has now become a cylinder, and we know the volume of the cylinder. Volume of a cylinder. Volume of a cylinder. Oh gosh. Four thirds pi r cubed is the volume of a sphere. Isn't it one third? Okay, a cylinder. We're talking about. One third. There you go. So I heard somebody say volume equals big B times H. True. Big B is the area for the base. What's the base? It's a circle. So this is pi r squared times h. That's the volume for one cylinder. Well, we're in a calculus class. I want to find the total volume. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? You want to spin the whole thing. Each of your rectangles has to get spun to make all these different cylinders. So go on to uh, see all disks and washers. Bless you. Everybody okay with what's going on? I hope there are connections that are happening in your brain and you're like, oh, it's just like what we did with area. Except area was flat. The area involved finding areas of rectangles and then what would we do? You find the area of a rectangle and then? Add it. You added. You added them all up. Yeah. How many? Infinite. All of them, and to get to the exact answer, you take the limit as n approaches infinity. Chris? Graphic designers be using this? Graphic designers absolutely use this. Absolutely. Mr. How about we keep it flat and not do this? No. Okay. <laughs> Your brains are going to adjust to the three-dimensional piece of this, I promise. I'm going to keep asking you, what does it look like, what does it look like, what does it look like? Why would you want to take it? Why would you want to make it 3D so that you can like enter like the real world of construction and engineering and architecture and <laughs> art <laughs> and like find volumes of things beyond like balls and cylinders? Okay, everybody kind of okay? All right, let's get the lights back on. And hey, Zuch, you might want to move the camera back so that we can kind of hit both places at the same time. So what I want to do is I want to talk to you guys about the process for like, what are we going to do to find volume? Well, what do we do with area? We said, if I could find the area of a rectangle, and then the area of the next one, and the area of the next, I would add them all up, right? You add them all up. 
Well, with volume, what we're going to do is say the volume is approximately the volume for each of the cylinders. Every single one of the cylinders, I've got props, I just need to keep my hands on them. Each of the cylinders looks something like this. Right? It, anyway, I found it at Home Depot, they were cheap, so it fit my budget. Okay, I want to find the volume of the cylinder. Well, the volume of the cylinder is pi times your radius squared times the height. What's the radius? How would you find the radius here? Isn't it height? And this is where we want to be careful. The radius, you're going to measure from the axis of rotation up to you hit the curve. How long is this radius? It's whatever f is at that point, right? It's the y value there. So in this case, the radius is f of x. The, the height, and I think this is the part that gets confusing. The radius, you're talking about going from the center out. But when we talk about height, we're really talking about the thickness of the cylinder from holding it this way. Yeah. How thick is it? <laughs> it's the difference in these two points, but really it's delta x. It's however wide those rectangles are, that's your <laughs> thickness. Paul. So, um, now we only use a rectangle for that using trapezoid I didn't say that, did I? Um, I think you may have heard that, but no. Okay, we're going to focus on rectangles. So, for this first volume, well, what's that going to be? It's supposed to be pi times the radius. Well, what's the radius? It's whatever the value of the function is at this point. So we're going to say that's f of x sub 1 squared times the thickness. How thick? Delta x. Delta x. That's the volume for the first piece. The volume for the second rectangle, so now we're over here. It's still a cylinder. So it's going to be pi times whatever the height of that function is squared times delta x. You go on to the third rectangle, and that gets fun to get another cylinder. They all look like this. Some are bigger, some are smaller. But each one of them has this form, pi times f of x sub 3 squared times delta x, plus all the way out to the last one, pi times f of x sub n squared delta x. They all have the same form. They all involve volume of a cylinder. Yeah? Um, what if you just take the pi out and the, the, and the square? Careful with the square oh, no, no, no. They all have the pi. Mm -hmm. They all have the delta x. They all are your function squared, right? All of them? So let's get clever about this. Anybody have a better way to write this? Pi. I don't want to write this all the time. Pi times, pi times delta x. Well, they're all being added together. And I need to keep this. So it's going to be pi. We're doing the sum. Right? Add them all up. Pi times what? Delta x. There's a delta x. I agree. Yeah. Not n. I think we're getting confused. It's f of x sub i. i is the index. i is the thing that changes. Squared. Squared. And then you sum from 1 to n. And this gives you the exact volume? No. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. This is an approximation. What I want to get is the true volume. We're going to take that limit. Limit as n approaches infinity, big sum from 1 to n of pi times f of x sub i squared times delta x. Now, because, and this is where I'm going to wave my hands a little bit and kind of cheat. When you take this limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from 1 to n, what happened with area when you actually took the infinite, you took the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum, this got replaced with the integral sign, because the integral means add them all up. So what you're going to do now is you're going to integrate pi times your function squared times dx, pi radius squared times the height, 
pi radius squared times the height, pi radius squared times the height. And then where do you integrate from? From wherever you start to wherever you end. But like when we solve for dx, like, not solve for dx, but like, usually when we have dx, we usually ignore it. Like, it's just there. True. Hold on to that thought till tomorrow. It's a big kind of okay. But right now, like, we're not going to actually do any problems. I just wanted to have, like, big ideas day. You know? Like, can you repeat that last step with A and B? Yeah, so the A and the B are your limits of integration. Where do you start finding the volume? Where do you stop finding the volume? Yeah, great. So this B, depending on well, the right point, left point? We're not even going to work. If we were doing an approximation, we'd have conversations about left end point and right end point or a midpoint method. Because we're going to go to infinity, we're not even going to have the conversation about left and right. This is going to be like the new formula. Just like when I ask you to find area, you know integrate from place to place, um, f of x times dx. Now this is integrate from place to place, pi times f of x squared dx. Mostly okay? Mm -hmm. Sheila. Uh, you know how like the rectangles are going up and down right now? Like, uh -huh. going to have time to go across. Oh, I want to just give you a great big hug. Her question was, you know how those rectangles are going up and down? Are they ever going to go sideways? Yes, it's no, called Thursday. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry, Paul, I can't hear you. No, we're not going to worry much about the sigma notation, but I wanted to start with we're approximating the volume, and then like we use the sigma just so that we're coming back to the notation. We got about four minutes left, which is fine. You guys are going to be just fine. All right, I want to push your thinking a little bit more. And I want you to look at this next one, top of page 14. Okay. Paul, you're going to go over to tab 3. Oh, sorry. Okay. I want you to have a conversation with somebody near you. What does that look like? Take this region and you spin it. Your axis of revolution is down here. It's the shaded region, only the shaded region. And you spin that. What does that look like? Home. I think this is where things get hard. So like this morning, I was in my thinking place. And I, and I was thinking, like, how am I going to get them to understand, while I was in the thinking place, how am I going to get them to understand what this shape looks like? And then it came to me. It's like a roll of toilet paper. Floor, are you okay? You're, you're missing my, my good joke about the roll of toilet paper in the thinking place. Take the shape, spin it around the axis of rotation. Paul, let's do that. And so not, not just one, just I think click revolve. And this takes the whole shape. Whoa. And you spin around oh, no. the axis of revolution. Oh, it does look like, like so Kevin, why don't we turn the lights off again? Sorry. Oh, there's a little candy one. Okay, Jeanette, what do you see? Why does it have the gap? It has the gap because I'm only taking the part that's above the x-axis and I'm spinning it around your axis of revolution. You have this piece over here that I'm not including. It's like a roll of toilet paper. Yeah? So we'll take the volume, do we have to consider the gap? If we're going to find the volume, do you have to consider the gap? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and we're going to talk about this more tomorrow, but here's what, let's, let's have a quick conversation here. The radius starts here, and you go out to the curve. Are you okay with that? Yeah. You always start in the axis of rotation. For this one, how long is that radius? Uh, f, of f of x. F of x? I disagree. How long is the radius if you go all the way down to the axis of revolution? The length would be f of plus f of x plus the you could say plus, or you could say f of x minus negative 2, top minus bottom. 
top curve is f of x, your bottom line is y equals negative 2. So the length is f of x plus 2. That's how long that is. Now, some folks are going to say, oh, I know what to do. We're supposed to say that the volume is the integral of pi times your radius squared from a place to a place. What, what was, it, was it 0 to 9? Uh, yeah. yeah. OK. What's the problem with that? Uh, you're measuring everything in the gap. You're, you're measuring everything. You're finding the volume of everything, including the whole. So what's the geometry going to tell you to do? Subtract. subtract. You're going to subtract from this another integral. You're going to go from 0 to 9, and you just need to tell me what's the radius for the whole. The radius for the whole is 2. So it's pi times 2 squared dx. Nice. That's as far as I wanted to get you today. We're good. Tomorrow, you must have a calculator. Find some weak child and take theirs if necessary. Oh, we were still filming. Darn it! <laughs> that was just a joke. <laughs>